Welcome participants to lecture number 5 in this particular week. So, in this week we are already analyzing and designing different fabric structures on single bed machine and double bed machines. Two key fabric properties which I am going to describe in this particular lecture are extensibility and recovery. So, you have seen some of the key structural properties as well as shrinkage properties uh, in the previous lectures. This two property of knitted fabric is extremely important from application point of view. So, whenever you design any particular fabric on any knitting technologies, you should have fair idea and understanding about the fabric response in terms of extensibility and recovery. Let us try to understand first these two terms and why they are important and how we can control these properties of fabric by controlling the stitch type or length. In this lecture, we will first understand two key properties extensibility and recovery. We will see how uh, different types of loops, tuck, float affect these type of properties. If you see uh, both of these properties, it belongs to mechanical characterizations because it will depends on the application of force on the fabric structure. So, if you apply a force in the fabric structure, uh, it will deform. So, in through this properties, we will try to analyze how the fabric will respond in presence of load and how the fabric will respond when you remove the load. So, uh, the useful instrument which uh, we use uh, in this characterization are the simple tensile tester or instron, uh, where we fix the specimens with two jaws and we pull the specimen from other side. So, and we get this type of diagram. So, I, these are the very common diagram if when you go for testing of any material, not just textile material, but for any materials. Uh, if you try to uh, analyze the response of the material in presence of load, you just fix the material between two specimens and you get the force and extension diagram. We will uh, now going to understand how we do this test and uh, especially from the context of knitted fabric and how these properties are defined and what are their role in real applications. So, let us first basic understanding about some of the key terms which uh, I might be using in this lecture. One of the key term is tensile stress. Stress is a very common term. Usually, we keep using this word with force, but uh, just to uh, let you know that these two terms force and stress are completely different. Uh, actually, stress is nothing but the response of a material in presence of a load. So, no doubt stress is related to load, but uh, in mechanics point of view, it has very significant role. So, when you apply any load to a material, for example, this is a specimen uh, in a cylindrical form uh, and you are applying the load from the edges. For example, if you have pen and if you apply load, uh, the material will try to resist because uh, you, the natural state of material is to remain in its original position. But with the help of force, you are actually extending the material. So, because of that, some internal resistance will develop inside the material. So, this internal res resistance is nothing but the stress. In uh, simple terms, uh, we define stress as force per unit cross sectional area. So, you have this cross sectional area over which you are applying force. So, force divided by area of cross sections. Uh, Herein, uh, we have uh, for the fabric, uh, we can have width and thickness, but in case of uh, this particular specimen, here the cross sectional area is circular. So, we can simply uh, take the area of cross section. So, area of cross section from fabric point of view, it will depend on width and thickness, but for this particular material, it is just the area of circle. How do we get this tensile stress? So, basically, we fix the specimen between two jaws of the machine and the upper jaw is fixed with the load cell. And then we will pull uh, the material from one side keeping the other side fixed. So, this side is fixed and the other side we pull it with the help of uh, lever and the specimen is fixed here. So, this is the length of the specimen which is fixed here uh, lower jaws and this is the upper jaws. So, when you pull 
the, uh, here is the load cell which will measure the amount of load and there is a extensometer which is present uh, which will measure the extension in the specimen. So, with this uh, we get the diagram like this. So, force versus extension. So, when you apply more and more force you will expect more amount of extension and eventually you will realize the fabric will or the material will break. So, if you see the terms extensibility in, in very crude way we can define the extensibility uh, as a material ability to stretch in the direction of load. So, whenever we apply force it is just the material ability to extend in the direction of force that is in simple terms that is the definition of extensibility. So, you have the fabric uh, this is the length of the fabric and this is the width of the fabric and we are applying the load through the jaws uh, on the machine I have already demonstrated that machine features. So, you when you fix the fabric sample on the machine you can pull from one side and the other side is fixed and you can find out the stress uh, forced by area of cross section. So, here uh, the area of cross section is rectangular uh, which is not visible because we are looking at the top plane. So, area of cross section for this specimen is uh, width into thickness because width is there and thickness is the thickness of the material. So, area of cross sections is a small rectangle through which the force is applied and if the other part is the strain um, which is uh, nothing but the change in length per unit original length. So, L i is the initial length, L f is the final length. So, distance of final minus initial after the application of load uh, we get the amount of deformation. So, amount of deformation divided by original length we define this term as a strain. So, we can convert these graphs in form of uh, stress and strain. So, if you see the literatures we usually convert force into stress which is given by this formula and we convert extension, extension the unit is usually in mm, uh, it is the unit of distance, but we take the relative extension with respect to original length. So, if you divide it by original length then we get it strain. So, this is the most popular one, uh, we use it uh, in mechanics and extensibility if you see it is the ability of the material uh, to stretch. So, we express this in percentage. So, when you apply certain amount of force or stress uh, we will see how much the fabric extends. So, for example, if you apply 10 kilo Newton of force you will see what is the change in length per unit original length. So, so basically it is nothing but a kind of a strain uh, at a particular load. So, extensibility no doubt it will depend on lot of fabric structural parameters especially the loop length the kind of stitches, the kind of yarn you are using in the fabric material. So, all those parameters not only the material, but also the structural parameters of fabric will control this property which is the extensibility. Now, let us go to the second property recovery. So, once you stretch the material uh, definitely uh, you will uh, realize when you remove the load from the material it will try to go back. So, now it will depend on the material that whether it is going back to its original shape yes or no. So, recovery is nothing but the material ability to return to its original shape when the load is released. So, here you can see this is the original length of the material you apply load um, certain load and because of that the, there will be deformation in the material. So, this is the LF is the final length of the material. And once you remove load from the material, the material will try to go back to its original position. So, original position is this, but in reality you will realize the material will deform permanently and it will never go back to its original initial length which is L i, it will recover only to L r. Depending on how much we have extended it and how much we have recovered, we define one parameter which is recovery parameters. For example, here the amount of deformation we have given to this fabric material is L f minus L i. So, amount of a stretch we have stretched this material uh, final length minus initial length. So, delta L stretch and if you see how much the material has recovered. So, this is the uh, final length of the material after loading and this is the final length of the material when you release the load. So, L f minus L r is the amount of recovery. So, delta L r is the 
amount of recovery. So, deformed length minus recovered length. Once you have these two quantity, you will simply take the ratio of these two and you will get the recovery in the percentage. So, recovery is not defined as the amount of recovered length divided by amount of stretch length. So, this is expressed in the percentage. Uh, this can, uh, the percentage especially in case of knitted fabric can go from 50 to 100. It will depend again on the material type, on the stitch type which is there in the structure and other key variables uh, which is uh, related to fabric behavior. Again, if you see these two uh, properties, especially extensibility and recovery, uh, it is very, very important from the application point of view because in reality we use these fabric for multiple times and we have seen especially in case of sports garment, knitted fabric is uh, mostly used. And in a sports garment, you might have seen the fabric is a stretch in multiple directions. Okay? So, sometimes it can stretch, it is always in loading whenever we do any kind of hand movement. The first criteria like uh, is the extensibility because fabric should stretch sufficiently. If the fabric is extremely tight, uh, it will not provide you or add comfort to you during movement. So, we should have sufficient uh, extensibility in the fabric so that it can assist the movement. Uh, also, uh, the second thing which is important is the good recovery because you can see when whenever you um, play with the garment on your body, you are doing stretching uh, multiple times and the material has to recover back to its original shape. So, again recovery become extremely key parameter. You do not want material to be too tight uh, because it will add discomfort and also you do not want that your material should lose its shape because once the material become loose, it will of no use. So, both extensibility and recovery is directly uh, deciding the performance of the fabric in long use. So, that is why these are the two key variables I believe uh, which should be extensively explored in any knit structure before you go for application. Here is again I am giving you some behavior of some of the fabric designs which I prepared in the lab uh, with help of my students and how they respond uh, when you are extending it in different directions. So, this is, uh, this is a small case study uh, practicals which we did it in the class. Again, these are the same fabrics which we uh, cre created for the stretch or the shrinkage uh, properties. If you remember the last lecture uh, where we were looking at the amount of shrinkage which the fabric is giving. Uh, so, again uh, we try to vary the rib variation. So, 1 cross 1, 2 cross 2, 3 cross 3, 4 cross 4. So, 1 cross 1 it means you are leaving 1 needles from both the beds. 2 cross 2 it means you are leaving 2 needles alternatively in each bed. 3 cross 3 you are leaving 3 needles alternatively in each bed. 4 cross 4 we design till 10 cross trend. And also we check the variation of uh, in tuck and float. So, sometimes we created float in one of the bed and in sometimes we created tuck in one of the bed and this is how we designed it. Uh, again, the machine gauge uh, on which we designed this fabric was 14 needles per inch. Uh, the count was approximately 40 tecks. Uh, the machine we used was V bed and relaxation method because uh, as you remember relaxation is a key thing because the moment you develop fabric on the machine you better go for either dry relaxation or wet relaxation to make sure the fabric remain dimensionally stable before you its use. So, we go for dry relaxation keeping the fabric for at least 24 hours in normal room condition on a flat surface. So, let us see uh, some of the uh, results we observed. So, extensibility uh, one thing we observed is uh, different extensibility behavior in coarse and veil directions. So, uh, we tried for rib, uh, simple rib fabric, so loops on each needles from front uh, bed and back bed. So, this is the normal uh, rib structure. We observed the extensibility, the amount of stretch ability of the fabric in coarse direction is much, much higher in the veil directions. So, and this is obvious, um, I think uh, when you try to stretch in coarse direction, you can see this is in loop shape. So, the moment you try to stretch in uh, coarse directions, this loop will try to open up. So, the leg, leg which is in V shape, it will try to open up. 
So you have more uh, chances that these loops can open up. So that's why um, along the course you will observe maximum strain, so maximum extensibility. But if you try to um, pull the fabric in whale direction, it means along a column, you can see there is a very less chances of uh, extensibility because uh, after some time um, the fabric will lock and the loop will not be able to open up the yarn. So uh, that is why uh, the in the whale direction uh, the extensibility uh, you can observe is will be very poor. So I had these two uh, small fabric samples with me uh, which I took from one of the fabric specimen. Uh, both in coast direction and whales direction. I can show you why uh, um, the behavior is different. So let us let us see these two fabric samples. So again uh, this is the fabric samples we created in whale direction. I cut the fabric so you can see this is, uh, this is along whale directions. So the columns are along this. So uh, as per the standards, uh, usually the specimen size is uh, uh, 15 to 20 centimeters and the gauge length is uh, from 7.5 to 10 centimeters. So if you try to stretch, you can see the fabric is not stretching at all in the whale direction. So you can see I am applying too much force, I am applying too much force, I am applying too much force but it is not stretching beyond this. So hardly 20 to 30 percent extension or strain you can observe. But if you see in course direction, so this is along the course direction and this was along the whale direction, so this was along the whale direction, this was along the course direction. So in whale direction you can see the stretchability is very poor, but in course direction you can see how much you can stretch. So definitely. Um, you can see how the fabric is responding. From the application point of view, you have to carefully cut the fabric specimen uh, depending on which direction you want the fabric to extend and in which direction you want fabric to be a little bit tight. So that is again from the designer point of view or from engineer point of view also you can uh, control the properties. So naturally um, along whale direction the property is different, along coast direction property will be different. If you go along diagonally, if you cut the fabric along diagonally again you will have different behavior. So that is the uh, knitting science. So if you really want to achieve uh, stretchability exactly same in all directions then you have to play with the structure carefully. So uh, let us see uh, what will happen if you change the loops or stitches uh, inside uh, um, this fabric. So what, what will happen to stretchability whether it will increase or decrease. Similarly in whale direction whether it will increase or decrease, it will again depend on the stitch type whether you are including loop, tuck or float. So I am going to show you in couple of slides. So let us go back again to the results part. So again you have seen that in the course direction the extensibility you can see up to 120 percent which I have already uh, shown you. Along whales it was around only 25 percent. So and the main reason you can uh, easily observe the loop behavior. So the moment in the course direction if you will try to stretch, these loops will simply open out, open up and the yarn will try to achieve in a straight form. So uh, before the yarn itself is start deforming, uh, the course will give you sufficient space for these loops to open up and the yarn be can become straight. So uh, that is why in the course direction you observe very high amount of extensibility compared to whale direction. Now let us uh, look at the response of loop length. Uh, if you change the loop length and you know how to change the loop length by changing the stitch setting. So if you change the loop length you can see along the uh, course direction, uh, this red one is the course direction. So along the course direction the stretchability or extensibility is increasing. Uh, so bigger loop length obviously if you have bigger loop length more chances that it can open up and uh, the yarn has uh, maximum space to cover um, during opening. So that is why you can expect very high stretchability or extensibility in course direction. But if you see in whale direction not much change has been observed because again no, uh, no matter how much loop length you will increase, a long column again if you, if you try to stretch the fabric, uh, 
the yarn will become uh, tight very fast because there is no chance for opening of the yarn because the foot is locked. So you can see this foot of each loop is locked. So it cannot open up and the yarn cannot be in a relatively straight position when you stretch this fabric in vertical direction. But again, if you see coarse direction, definitely you can observe the variations. So you can control the fabric properties by changing loop length in coarse direction. Now let us uh, see the influence of rib variation. Here all needles was participating in loop formation and here two needles uh, alternatively in front and back bed left. So two front and then two back bed was left, then two back loops, then two front was left, again two front loops. Here three cross three. So you can see uh, when you have more number of loops, uh, technical front and uh, back simultaneously, you need to apply more force to achieve the extension. So, but if you have more and more uh, technical front loops along the course followed by technical back loops, so if you increase the number of technical front loops uh, in the course followed by multiple number of technical back loops, you will observe the fabric will become highly extensible because you can see very less amount of force is required to extend the fabric up to 70 mm. But to uh, extend the fabric up to 70 mm, you can see how much force is required uh, for rib fabric. So for rib fabric, it is 0.1 Newton to extend up to 70 um, mm approximately. But for um, 3 cross 3 fabric, you can see here only uh, it is even less than 5 times force which is required for the normal 1 cross 1. So naturally uh, more technical front loops along the course uh, followed by technical back loops results in more amount of extensibility. So I have uh, two samples uh, with me where you can clearly see the difference how is it easy to deform the fabric when you have more number of technical front followed by technical back compared to the simplest structure. So let us uh, let's see this fabric. So here I have 10 cross 10. So it means uh, 10 front loops followed by 10 back loops. So you can see how easy. So even by small force, you uh, I can deform this. So very easy, I can deform this fabric. Absolutely no force is required. It's a self-foldable structure. So the moment you release the force, it will just self-fold. So this is the beauty of this particular fabric. So it's so extensible. We have not used any kind of elastomeric yarn in this fabric, but still the fabric is so extensible, very easy to deform. But if you see 3 cross 3 fabric, so uh, this is a 3 cross 3 fabric. So you have 3 uh, technical front or technical back. We need to apply little bit force, more amount of force to deform this. So you can see here. So I. I'm, I am needing little bit more amount of force to stretch this fabric but and if you place 10 cross 10, it is very, very simple in stretching. So uh, that is the beauty of uh, knitted structure. So playing with uh, the rib, you can control the force and extension. So, uh, so this is how uh, you can see. So in case of higher number of technical front followed by technical back, you will observe very less amount of force in uh, deforming the fabric. So naturally the extensibility of these type of fabric is much, much higher if we keep the same level of force. Now let us see the influence of tuck and float. So uh, these are the basic uh, symbol of the fabric. So you have uh, um, one cross one rib. So you can see uh, in coarse direction, veil direction, the extensibility is different. When you have tuck in, uh, in the second course and, uh, and this is the repeat unit, so in the third course again one cross one rib, then followed by one front loop and tuck on the back bed. So this is basically a cardigan structure. So you can see uh, the extensibility drastically go down in course direction. So in the course direction you can see the extensibility go down. So uh, this is the difference uh, when you have more tuck, naturally the fabric will already become wider. 
So if the fabric will become wider, so the loops are already open up in tuck. So once the loop is already open up, it has not too much chances um, to further open up the other loops. So that's why the extensibility become reduced. Uh, if you see in uh, wheel direction, the extensibility is increasing. So here you can see it is around 25%, uh, but here it is around 50%. The reason be because you have seen like whenever you have uh, any tuck loop, it is always have the bigger held loop. So whenever there is a bigger held loop, it will try to relax the fabric in veil direction. So fabric will shrink in veil direction. So that naturally you have more chances to extend in length direction. So that's the reason why you are having maximum amount of extensibility in veil direction when you have tuck. When you increase the tuck uh, simultaneously on the same needle, so here the needle on the back bed in this column, you can see this needle is having two tucks simultaneously. So once you have two tucks simultaneously, um, the extensibility uh, will increase little bit in, in the veil direction. It will decrease comparatively with the one tuck structure. Uh, if you see the float, so in float, you can definitely you can see compared to the rib one, whenever you have floats in the structure, you have limited extensibility in the course. And the reason be because you have seen in the float, the yarns are already in a straight position. So once the yarn is already in a straight positions, um, there is a less chance for the extension of the yarn. So because the loops are already open up, that's why the yarn is in under straight condition. So whenever you have more and more tuck, you can observe very poor extensibility in course direction, so where, which you can see here. So here the course direction, the extensibility is very, very poor. When you increase uh, the amount of floats too much, uh, the um, extensibility will go down. Whenever you have uh, tuck and float simultaneously, again, there will be some differences. It depends what type of uh, stitches you are giving uh, inside the fabric structure and the fabric will respond according to that. And in the veil direction almost if you see uh, the floats and rib almost similar, but coast direction definitely you can observe a major difference. So uh, this is the beauty of um, tuck and float stitches. Uh, one key thing I want to uh, mention here is um, um, if you want to make sure the fabric is stretchable uh, in all directions, almost similar amount. So for example, if it is stretching 100% in veil direction, then it should also have the stretchability similar in coach direction. So the nearest uh, fabric which is behaving like this is uh, this one where you have two floats. So here you can see the course and veils extensibility are slightly closer compared to other fabrics. And this is the beauty because you can engineer uh, the number of floats and modulate the extensibility uh, and make sure the fabric has uniform properties in all directions. So that is the possibilities uh, which knitting can provide. Let's go back to the other part uh, which is the recovery. So in recovery, um, again if you see rib variation and loop variations, uh, uh, I have not observed too much difference. Uh, especially in coast direction, the recovery uh, was much, much better. So you can see here, after 200% extension, I observed almost 90 to 95% recovery of all the fabric samples, which I already showed you. So um, one cross one by changing three uh, loop length, here two cross two, changing uh, loop length, here three cross three, changing loop length. So these are the symbol of the fabric, each fabric. So, but in veil direction, um, the recovery was poor compared to coast direction. Uh, the reason be because when you extend 200% stretch, it might be possible that the yarn itself might deform and which cannot be recovered back. So that's the uh, key thing. So, uh, but naturally in coast direction, you can expect maximum recovery. So when you are putting any fabric panel uh, on, on a garment and designing something, you need to make sure uh, the directions uh, in which you are using this panel because uh, if, if you design in such a way that it has maximum deformation in veil direction, then you will realize that the fabric will bag after some time because it will permanently deform. So uh, and these are some of the variations um, uh, which I observed um, with some of the samples which we produced. Uh, 
tuck and float also uh, if you see the similar type of response was there but better than the rib rib one um, so here uh, this is the rib variation so you can see the recovery is very very good in coach direction but in whale direction so uh, the recovery was increasing when you have more technical front end back loop simultaneously so 3 cross 3 rib was better recovery properties compared to 1 cross 1 and 2 cross 2 when you include a uh, tuck so because of tuck you can see the recovery become poor uh, you can see here clearly so this is very poor recovery in course directions because the yarn will deform after 200 percent stretch um, when you have two tucks simultaneously again same thing is happening uh, compared to rib you have poor response if you see float again uh, it has poor recovery in course direction compared to rib the other stitches the variation will be like this so um, it depends again uh, what type of fabric design you are making uh, you can selectively um, make your design of experiment either you can vary the rib uh, type or whether you can um, vary the uh, tuck alternatively and float and you can you can uh, do this uh, simple study uh, to observe the fabric behavior so this is just for the understanding um, um, so that more test um, you will do uh, the more uh, you will understand about the fabric and behavior which is very very important uh, from product point of view so uh, we have seen uh, the recovery and extensibility behavior now let's see uh, how we can improve the extensibility and recovery because uh, uh, eventually uh, in in the product uh, we want 100 percent recovery because we don't want that we are using some t-shirts and after um, 10 days or 20 days uh, we see that the t-shirt loses uh, its recovery means and uh, permanently deform so this extensibility and recovery uh, we need to make sure the fabric uh, has good extensibility as well as good recovery after multiple use so to improve extensibility and recovery definitely we have to look for the smart materials or such ma those material which has better properties uh, in extensibility and recovery so uh, elastomeric yarns are quite popular in knitted structure so if you see your socks uh, sometimes pressure garments uh, even in your sports garments many times uh, they include elastomeric yarn intentionally in a fabric structure the reason being uh, because the elastomeric yarn has very very good stretch properties as well as it has almost 100 percent recovery properties and that's the beauty of this uh, polymer uh, which is based on polyurethane so if you take this yarn uh, from the market if you try to stretch it you can extend up to 500 percent uh, this is commonly known as lycra or elastane so the yarn itself has very uh, good uh, stretch and recovery properties so if you use such type of yarn in the fabric the fabric will automatically will become very good stretch and recovery properties so um, but now the uh, problem with this type of yarn is uh, it is very difficult to uh, include this type of yarn in a knitted structure so uh, so that's why there are some key method uh, through which we can integrate these type of yarns in the fabric structure so one of the key method is uh, laying method um, in the double bed uh, when you are making the loops by simple yarn like cotton polyester or wool so these they are making yarns and you can put the inlay as a float so these uh, inlay or the elastomeric yarn are not the part of the loop making process but still it will be there inside the fabric and it cannot come out very easily so how you can make this on a weaved machine so for example here the front bed is uh, making front loops back bed is making uh, back loops and there, there are plenty of space here you can see here so you can simply put the elastomeric yarn uh, in between you can go for the second course and in this way uh, these, these uh, elastomeric yarn will be logged uh, within the loops itself so this is how uh, when you go for the second course after putting this elastomeric yarn the elastomeric filament can be logged within the loops bet uh, between technical front and back so between the layers uh, of technical front side and back side you will see uh, elastomeric yarn 
is will be floating. So I have this fabric samples with me. Um, so you can see here how the yarns will be floating. Although I have not used a elastomeric yarn, but I have used the other yarn. So you can see the other yarn is hidden between technical front and back loop. So if you see from one side, this is a simple rib structure and you can see uh, in the courses, you can see how the yarn is long. So you can see here how the how the yarn. So you this yellow one is basically it is not the part of loop, it is not intermessing, but still it is logged inside the structure. So that is the uh, beauty of knitting, uh, you can interlock anything. Um, so from the both side it looks similar and the reason being because uh, you have fed this yarn uh, between technical front and back loops uh, on the machine and this in this way technical front and back loops will combine and hold this yarn and not release. The other thing on a single bed if you want to uh, put this type of uh, inlaid yarn, uh, it is difficult. So that is why you need to uh, go for tuck and floats. So you can put the inlay as a tuck and float. So here uh, basically you have to go for two feeds. So in course number one, the feed one, all needles will be knitting and in feed two, some of the needles will be making tuck and the other needles will be doing float. So of the same bed. So this is how the course one will be designed. So here A and B is course number one. So, so if you see A, uh, it is making loops in the first feed and the B, uh, this is tuck and then two floats and then tuck. If you go for uh, second course, uh, which is C and D, two yarns are feed. So in the first yarn when uh, it was feed, it is making technical back. But uh, if you see D, it is again uh, tuck two floats and then uh, tuck two floats and then tuck. So this is how you do it in a single bed uh, because in single bed it is not, there is only one type of loops. So naturally then we have to make sure the inlay yarns can go um, in a tuck way. So uh, this uh, approach can be used uh, for single bed laying process. Uh, the other way, the most simplest one is the plating where you just uh, combine two yarns and two different yarns will be fed simultaneously and the needle will be making loops. So this process is called plating where uh, the loops consist of two or more yarns. So you can see each loop has two yarns and each yarn will be participating um, in the loop formation. So, so the black and white yarns, so each loop is made from black and white yarns. So you can you can mix uh, lycra uh, with normal filament and make the fabric highly stretchable and highly recoverable at the same time there are other way also like uh, you can also play with the design of yarn itself you can go for core spun yarn there are different types of yarn where you can uh, actually generate elastomeric filament itself and mix with a synthetic filament um, and then go for knitting. So that is also one of the method uh, like core spinning where you have uh, lycra in the core and um, other filament at the seat. So you can use those type of yarn to make uh, uh, elastomeric fabrics which is highly stretchable and recoverable. So with this uh, um, I am going to summarize this particular week because uh, this week I believe uh, it will be too hectic for you. Uh, the reason being because we have covered so many designs and so many testings. Uh, the main reason for uh, doing this uh, design and analysis was because um, you just do not uh, focus only on the design aspect, but also you try to understand the science of knit structure because science is extremely important because the if you understand more and more about loop behavior, uh, you, can, you can design your product uh, and optimize its properties as per your requirements. Overall, uh, we have seen we can control the loop length, how we control the whales and course per inch, uh, how we can control the GSM, so all these structural characteristics. We have also seen three mechanical characteristics, one is shrinkage, uh, the fabric shrinks when you take, once you take out from the machine, fabric extensibility, how much you can stretch at a particular load uh, and recovery how well the fabric can go back to its original position. So these three mechanical properties and structural properties, the 
must uh, whenever you go for any design. I have also shown you how the appearance of the fabric will also change uh, when you have different stitches um, on the machine. So, uh, with this uh, when you have the fair understanding of aesthetics, design, structure and mechanic, um, you can think uh, for product, you can also um, design fabric with good breathability, you can also design fabric with the desired weight configuration, you can also design fabric which is more stable, uh, we can, you can also think for a fabric which conforms with the body perfectly. Um, you can also minimize the hysteresis uh, so that repeated response can be observed. So, um, it all depends on how well you uh, learn the characterization. So, I expect all of you uh, whenever you get chance uh, you focus on structural characterization and mechanical characterization and try to uh, link with the product properties and try to think what you actually want to achieve through knit designs. So, with this I am stopping here this particular week. In coming weeks, uh, we will go even uh, very complicated designs of knitting. So, whatever designs you have seen so far, it is just the simplest one which is wide popular in the market. But apart from that, there are many other designs are there like cable design, pointer design. You have many other uh, possibilities are there in knitting. Apart from that, we will also uh, mm, uh, learn a new kind of uh, uh, knitting process where uh, you can individually select needles uh, of each bed. Uh, also, we will learn about some new techniques like racking of the bed through which you can design even more complicated loop structures. So, uh, stay tuned. Um, if you get time to do the practice, um, I expect uh, all of you to please. Uh, do little bit of practicals related to knit structures and uh, stay tuned once again. Thank you very much.